Boop, boop, ba doop. It's been a few days now since the Fine Bros released their React World announcement, and just two days since they released their update, which infuriated even more people. If you're not familiar with the situation, I will link to my previous two videos right over here and in the description below. From the beginning, my concern has been that they would abuse their trademark, and in the days since their announcement, a lot of proof has come forward that they have done exactly that. Now, this evidence is scattered all over the internet. Internet. So today I'm going to bring all of it together in one place in this video and we'll take a look at it in context so that you can come to your own conclusion about whether what they're doing is right or wrong. Time for a field trip. This is the Fine Brothers live count and as you can see it is still going down and down. In fact their hemorrhaging of subscribers has only accelerated. Since this whole debacle of them trying to trademark the word react and succeeding by the way has started there has been a public outrage and you can see they've lost well over 200,000 subscribers in just a few days. At their highest, they were at 14,080,000 subscribers. So why the backlash? Well, the Fine Bros have been pulling down videos that use their trademarks. So for example, Kids React, Teens React, they've already gone after creators who use that. And by creators, I don't just mean little creators. I actually mean big people like Ellen DeGeneres with The Ellen Show. I'm going to go through all of the big cases of evidence I found so far, as well as their context. And if there is more that I miss, when you make it to the end of the video, let me know in the comments below. And I might make a part two. Let's start by understanding trademarks as a whole. One common defense for the Fine Brothers has been, oh, they're just trying to defend their reaction format, not take down everybody else's. Well, aside from the fact that they still haven't explained what exactly their reaction format is, and as we'll see later, they've tried to take down videos that aren't like their reaction format at all. Let's look at what trademarks are actually designed for. As the owner of a trademark, you can stop others from using your trademark, when the trademark is being used on competing goods or services. So yes, they are by design after reactor content creators by registering this trademark in the first place. Now what the fine bros have said is that just because they have this trademark doesn't mean they'll enforce it on everybody. Just because we have or might get trademarks doesn't mean we're going to run around and start taking down videos. Well, aside from the case that they already have, let me show you that legally, they will actually have to use it to take down other videos if they want their trademark to be enforceable. For this, let's look at some legal precedent. Now, there are many legal cases out there addressing this, but I'm gonna take a look at Abraham versus Alpha Chi Omega. This case has to do with the trademark over paddles that were used in fraternities. Now, while that's a topic unto itself, let's take a look at the ramifications of this case. The fraternity defended themselves by saying that this trademark wasn't actively enforced and it was being selectively applied to them. So one of the takeaways from this case, which applies to the Fine Brothers, is that a complete failure to enforce a trademark will lead to a weakening of the owner's marks. What does this mean? It means that if the Fine Brothers don't enforce their trademark on everybody, equally, their trademark will actually lose its value and they might not be able to enforce it. So by design, they have to use this trademark against people. It's not even a question of goodwill anymore. It's that because of what they're doing, they will legally have to do this. Now this isn't new in the YouTube world. Hank Green actually debated with this issue when he was considering trademarking a phrase. He used the phrase, don't forget to be awesome. As you can see in his blog post, we made a decision early on that we couldn't trademark DFTBA or don't forget to be awesome for use on apparel because then we would have to enforce it against urban outfitters and fans equally. So with what the Fine Brothers are doing, not only are they going to be enforcing this against huge shows like the Ellen DeGeneres show, but they're gonna be in forcing it against every little creator out there because they have to. But this all could have been avoided if they just didn't try to register the trademark in the first place. So the question is, now that the Fine Bros already have these trademarks, they already have Kids React, they already succeeded in getting the React trademark. It's now in the opposition phase, which I'll discuss later. Now that they already have these trademarks, how are they going to use them? Well, past behavior is always a good indicator of future behavior. So we're gonna take a look at how they've 
use their trademarks already so that we can find out for ourselves. There are a number of incidents that have come to light over the past few days where the Fine Brothers have targeted content creators both big and small in both traditional media like television and new media like YouTube. And I'm going to start with the big cases and work our way down. First, the Ellen DeGeneres Show. Ellen did a segment called Ellen Introduces Kids to the Technology of Yesterday. Notice the phrasing there, not kids reacting to technology. She introduces kids to technology of yesterday. Seems to be awfully verbose wording to try to avoid the specific phrase of react, doesn't it? Also note, that comments are disabled for this video. Now that's not the case for other videos on her channel. Let's look at this one that was just posted a week ago. There are tons of comments here. So why are comments disabled on this video in particular? Could it be because the Fine Brothers went after Ellen? Yes, it is. In fact, here's a Facebook post of the Fine Brothers sending their fans to attack the Ellen show because of her format. And I quote, wow, the Ellen show just did a kids reacting to old technology, didn't mention us. Gee, why would you want her to mention you for the publicity? Need you to go to their Facebook and blast the kids react link. Even if they didn't realize. This is so important. Even if they didn't realize, even more important to tell them. Thanks for the help. Here's the link, go leave comments. So right there by saying, even if they didn't realize, he's admitting that this probably wasn't intentional. But to make this so much worse, he's mobilized his fan base to attack this show for supposedly copywriting their format. Well, let's take a look and see if this show actually did that. Okay, so we have a really long introduction by Ellen herself, which is something that the Fine Bros don't do. This intro goes on for a whole minute and a half. This is totally different from the Fine Brothers format. Now let's take a look at the kids actually reacting. Now take a look at this format, and I'm gonna leave a link to the video in the description too, of course. Do you think that this format is similar to the Fine Brothers? She's not using the same backdrop the Fine Brothers are. She's not having the kids react to videos, which is what the fine bros usually do, the reaction itself isn't separated into clips the way that the fine brothers do it, and it's interspersed with Ellen giving her own opinion, which is also something the fine bros don't do. In fact, they're known for staying impartial and letting the reactors take center stage. So what exactly is this format that the fine bros are trying to protect? They've been purposely ambiguous with us and not explaining what their format is, even though they had to explain it to register a trademark. Why not just be transparent with us with that information? Maybe it's because they want to leave that trademark open so they could use it against shows like the Ellen DeGeneres show, whose format is entirely different. Because bear in mind, not only is this clip different, but this clip is part of an overall much longer show. It is not the sole focus of the show the way it is for the Fine Brothers. There is nothing in common here. So as you can see now by their past behavior, they are not just looking to apply their trademark just to YouTube. This is going across all media, across all videos in existence. So if you haven't understood yet why this has become such a huge ordeal, it's because it affects all videos that can ever be made if they plan to be showing any reactions at all. Now you might be saying, oh, well, this is Ellen. This is just one case. They haven't done this anywhere else. Well, you might be familiar with BuzzFeed. They're always showing videos of people reacting to things. Well, would it surprise you to know that the Fine Brothers have gone after BuzzFeed too? And by the way, here's a tweet of the Fine Brothers talking about the Ellen show too. So they did this across all their platforms, not just Facebook. Facebook. They really made a concerted attempt to mobilize their audience. So let's take a look at what these guys have done against BuzzFeed. This is just going too far, BuzzFeed. Sad day for the web community. They're talking about this video, teens watch 90s music videos for the first time. So are they saying that nobody can show teens reacting to anything? Yes, they are. Now let's take a look at the format so you can decide for yourself. Now, this format certainly has more similarities than the Ellen Show's format did. However, it has the very distinct BuzzFeed feel to it. So there's kids with a computer. Is that what the Fine Bros mean by trademarking their format? Why can't the Fine Bros tell us what their format is? It would answer 
all of these questions, but they're not because they want to be open to apply their interpretation to whatever videos they want to. Now, is this similar to their format? They're showing a video on a computer. The fine bros don't do this. They just show the video inlaid into the video. They also show the full quality video, not on the SKU that BuzzFeed uses. Once again, I will link to that video in the description below so you can take a look. And also, can I note that BuzzFeed did not use the word react. They used the word watch. So why are the fine bros going after them if they only wanted to trademark the word react? Because they have a channel named react. We have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash react. So we're trying to protect it doesn't mean we're going to run around and start taking down videos. It doesn't make sense, does it? And this is the crux of the problem. The fine bros are saying one thing, their actions show them doing something entirely different. But lest you think, oh, they're only going after big media, this isn't gonna affect small content creators, let's take a look at some of those cases too. Lekev Plays made a video showing how the fine bros took down one of their videos that only had eight views. Let's take a closer look at this claim. Now, let me say something right here because this is really important and I am being fair and balanced here. This was claimed by full screen, not the Fine Brothers. So for those who aren't familiar with how YouTube works, a lot of times YouTubers partner with something called a multi-channel network, or in short, an MCN. In this case, the MCN is full screen. Now, if you're not a YouTuber yourself, you might not be aware of what these contracts usually look like. I can't speak to the Fine Brothers contract, but I myself am signed with an MCN, so I can talk to you from my experience. When I signed with my MCN, there was a clause in the contract allowing the MCN to actively look over YouTube videos and claim any videos that use my content. Once I gave them that permission, which was a non-negotiable term in the contract and is standard for almost all MCN contracts, I lose the ability to stop them from doing that. So at that point, the fault lies on the MCN and not on, in this case, the Fine Brothers themselves. Yes, initially they gave the MCN permission to do this, so ultimately it does fall on them, but in reality, this is something that every single YouTuber goes through, especially when you become larger. One thing I do have to point out, however, is this video already had eight views by the time it was blocked, so they didn't preemptively block him from showing the video, which is better than some companies do, and as you can see right here, he does have the option to file a dispute, so if he disagrees with this, he could simply file a dispute, and what that process would look like is he would file a dispute. If full screen still decides they own the copyright, they would reject that dispute and reinstate their claim. Then if Lekev, this content creator, disagreed with that, he could appeal their reinstatement of the claim. I know this gets complicated. At that point, most companies let it go, especially if it's fair use, like it was in this video in my opinion. However, what full screen could do is they could decide to issue a DMCA takedown notice, have the video pulled down, at which point through YouTube, this content creator would have to go through the counter notification process saying that he owns the video. And once he does that, if full screen decided that they wanted to keep this video down, they would actually have to start a lawsuit. They'd have to start legal proceedings to do so. So on one hand, content creators like this can't complain too much because he fully had the option to dispute this. And if he's not willing to legally defend his rights, then why wouldn't a company walk all over him? You have to be willing to defend your rights. You can't just complain if you're not going to do anything. Which for the record, I actually informed him that all he needed to do was dispute this claim. And he responded, why would I give a shit about a strike on this garbage channel? Well, if he doesn't care, then why is he complaining? And if he doesn't care, then everything's fine. Then there's 8-Bit Eric, who also had his videos taken down. And in some case, also blocked worldwide. Now in most cases, let me clarify that when we say videos taken down, they weren't actually removed from YouTube. Full screen didn't issue a DMCA takedown notice. All they did was monetize the content. So what that means is instead of Eric making money from the content, full screen makes money from the content because the original content wasn't Eric's. Now that's debatable because he's reacting to the original content, so that comes down to fair use. 
And for fair use to apply, it has to be determined whether or not his content was transformative, whether or not it harms the market for the original content. So that's really a separate issue from trademarks being enforced. However, it does show that if this stuff flies under the radar, that yes, the fine bros are not opposing having these videos being claimed. Me personally, if I get a claim on content and I feel that what I did is under fair use, I dispute it. But in none of these videos are the creators talking about having actually disputed this. So I will leave that up to you to decide. However, coming back to the big picture, I do think it is obvious what the Fine Brothers intent is now. Big content creators, small content creators, it doesn't matter. The Fine Bros are going to find you and they're going to get you. But what's even more interesting is that this isn't something that's come about recently. The Fine bros have had their eye on cornering the market from the start. There is evidence of a channel that had a series called Seniors React, and before the fine bros even started their Elders React series, they abused the DMCA takedown system to shut down these smaller channels. There's a link to a Reddit post on this, which you can see right up here, and of course it'll be in the description, and you can actually see an archived version of the Senior React video here. So let's take a look at this video's for Matt. Seniors, react! Hello everyone, this is HDS Kieski here, and I am back with game number four. Now this format was being used before the Fine Brothers ever started their Elders React series. The Fine Brothers actually copied somebody else's format. If these guys had the trademark to reacting, and used it against the Fine Brothers the way the Fine Brothers seem to want to use it against everyone else, the Fine Brothers channel might not even exist today as we know it. So now that we've seen all of this evidence, let's step back and look at the bigger picture. We have seen that the Fine Brothers registered these trademarks, and they are willing to use them against people, and beyond that, they will have to use them against people if they want their trademarks to be valid. So despite them saying that they don't plan on taking down content with it, of course, they have already, and now you've seen it. But what about the bigger picture? Aside from the fact that they have left their format ambiguous so they could apply it to anything they want, as you've seen for yourself, how does React World make this situation a thousand times worse? Let me tell you what can happen with React World. They already legally have trademarked Kids React, Teens React, and Elders React. Well, as people join React World and start creating other types of content, that the fine bros might not have had the resources for. Like, for example, the military reacts, nurses react, babies react. Those ideas can become trademarked because they become part of the Fine Brothers properties. By default, as soon as you start producing those shows in their format, they can go out and trademark this. So not only are they just trying to protect their series, what they've backdoored into is being able to trademark absolutely all derivatives of reaction content. If you had the idea to do my dog reacts to dog food, you could do that today. But if React World becomes a reality, you might not be able to. And this is where, as a content creator, I'm going to give you my experience to take this whole thing one step further than Reddit or any place else I've seen has. As a reaction channel, I can tell you that when you try to create reaction content, if it's simply you reacting to the content, you have to be able to argue that what you're doing is transformative under fair use and that you're not harming the market for the original. And that's becoming more and more difficult to do. And almost every single video that reaction channels upload go through copyright claims. So what's going to happen when reaction channels, as they're going to have to do, because companies are forcing them to, what's going to happen when they try to shift away from this simple format? How can we change our reaction format? We'd have to splice it down so we're not showing the entire video. We might include somebody else reacting to it. We might include a fancy backdrop so that the video doesn't take up the whole screen. And get Guess whose format those videos will start to look like? That's right, the Fine Brothers. And because they're saying they own that reaction format, that means that once these companies have squeezed out the way smaller creators are doing things right now, we'll be squeezed out of the market completely because when we try to move to a new format, the Fine Brothers can say, uh-uh, that's our format, not yours. 
and we have it trademarked. Whew, that was a lot to go through. I can't wait to see your opinion on it in the comments below. I hope that now everybody can see why this is such a huge deal and why the Fine Brothers subscribers are plummeting and people aren't supporting this. At this point, I believe that React World as a whole should not go forward. The Fine Brothers need to cancel this idea because we have seen their intent and even if they decide to go forward, the public has clearly shown that they don't want it. What's more, I believe that they should cancel their trademark registrations. They have the ability to cancel it themselves. And if they want to gain the faith of their audience back, that's what they have to do. Because soon, it's going to move past them losing subscribers. And the public is going to start complaining to their sponsors. And that's going to hit the fine bros right in their wallets. And it could shut them down permanently. They need to do what's right, they need to stop React World, and they need to stop with these trademarks. Please comment your thoughts in the description below. Whether your opinion is the same as mine or not, this is an issue that needs to be discussed. It's extremely important and we need to keep it alive until this is addressed and resolved. If you found this helpful, please share it. Share it with your friends, share it on Reddit, share it anywhere that can spread this information now that we have it all together in one place. And if you enjoy me, please feel free to subscribe. And if you missed my previous videos on this, I'll give you a link right now to start from the beginning. You should watch this video too right now. Boop, boop, ba -doo.